This segment of the Plastic Surgery Channel is brought to you by Galatea, now offering Galaform, the first 3D mesh for soft tissue support. This is No Spin Live, and we've got a great show for you today with some great plastic surgeons. We're going to talk about a new plastic surgery trend, plastic surgery addicts, and ball sack Botox. So with us here today, we've got DDV from Boston, Massachusetts. Dan, the Patriots are back. You're feeling good on this uh, Tuesday, eh? Yeah, I was. I, you know, Brady's 40, but you know, the Giants still suck. <laughs> and we've got JP, Dr. Jason Posner from Boca Raton, Florida in hurricane recovery mode. Post hurricane, we're good, back to work. Yeah, and we've got Pat McGuire from St. Louis. Pat's getting ready for the St. Louis Blues hockey season. Always ready for good hockey season. Hopefully the Blues will uh, beat Dallas this year. And we've got the G, Dr. Grant Stevens from Marina Del Rey. Grant, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Go Ducks. Let's get into it. This first story is about, actually from Hollywood's top plastic surgeons, it says they're, they're saying that they'll do the procedures, but we'll just fix it afterwards. I don't know, like Jason, you start us off, do, do good plastic surgeons really say they're just gonna do whatever and then fix it after? What's the deal with that? You know, I, I don't know about that. I think we all try, you know, those of us who've been in business for a while as everyone on this, on this um, call, you know, look, we all try to do things right the first time. It's nothing worse than having the patient come back and having to fix it and disrupt your overtime and they're mad at you. We all try to do things right the first time, but you know, as many of us do, like probably 70% of my practice is secondary at this point. That's what we do. I do things that are messed up. You know, fix things that are messed up. Sometimes they're my mess ups, but hopefully not most of the time. Um, but I think it's something that we all try to do right the first time, but that is, most of us who are experienced are ending up doing a lot of secondary surgery at this point. You know, the story had a few kind of confusing things. And one thing it said, there was all these world famous top plastic surgeons. And the only person I recognized in there was Grant. You were quoted in there. The rest of them I'd never heard of. But I mean, Grant, you talked about like, you're seeing more revisions. I mean, what do you, what do you think about this kind of whole topic? Yeah, when they called me, they were asking me about revisions and I didn't get the same takeaway that you just did, that you just said, and maybe I missed the point, but it seemed to me they were asking, what percentage of them I seeing or people are coming in with too much filler, too much Botox and facial asymmetry and craziness and what, what am I doing about it? You know, how am I approaching that with these stars that are overdone and people want to overdo their lips or whatever it is. And so I said about 30% of the stuff I'm doing is revisions for that type of non-surgical work. Uh, thankfully, I'm not as high as Jason at 70. I can't yeah, stand 30. They're saying that, that doctors are always trying to convince them to do different procedures. I mean, do you, do you believe that? No, consider the source. It's Hollywood Reporter, you know. I don't, I don't buy that at all. I have a lot of very sophisticated people here in Hollywood. Not everybody wants to look weird. We see a lot of people come in, they want something done for a wedding or for their high school reunion or college reunion. And a lot of it's timing. You know, with the fillers, um, they will you know, settle out over time. So you really have to make sure you don't want to do the first time before some major event. With If you have Botox or something gets dropped, there's not a lot you can do about that. But uh, there are things that can be uh, done or overdone things but the key is getting to the right person who's not going to overdo you in the first place yeah i mean we live in the mean in plastic surgery we want to try to do one operation but the media lives in extremes and usually it's extremely bad because people love to see bad in the media so i, I think and i agree with grant i just think this is a manifestation of the media's interpretation of, of plastic surgery that's it Okay, let's move on. So this next story is about extreme plastic surgery. It kind of goes through three kind of plastic surgery addicts and what they're doing and how many procedures they've had. And actually one of these, uh, Pixie Fox, we've had on this show before. Um, but I mean, Grant, let's start with you. You, you kind of talked about it in the last segment, but- Yeah, I'll tell you, I've yeah. seen the BBLs. Everybody comes in, they all want to look like Del Vecchio's butts. Mm -hmm. And they bring in pictures of his crazy posts and all. And I said, look, I'm not into it. So I sent them to my associate. It's like, who has the biggest butt? So when I read about that six foot butt, I thought, wonder if Del Vecchio did her. But in any event, uh, I'm getting a lot of requests for crazy big butts. DDV, you, I mean, you're, you're the, the master of the BBL. So, I mean, that lady had a big butt, don't you think? You know, what would we say about the guys in Vegas who do the 800cc implants? 
I think within reason, you've got to give the patient what he or she wants, but within reason is the key. Um, the other good thing is there's a 2,500 cc limit on what you can put in each butt because it, in most states have a 5,000 cc limit. So if you if you kind of practice the rules of the road, you really can't make a butt too, too big. This is not the norm though, right? Yeah. This is not what we're seeing every day. You're not seeing people walking in your office like this, right? You the know, ribs I, removed. I, I, and... live in, I live in Boca Raton, Florida. I'm not seeing this. My practice is, you know, fixing a lot of boobs and faces and things. I, I'm not seeing these crazy big butts. They're not walking in my office these days. Sometimes the boobs do, and we try to get rid of the extremes at this point. I, I'm not into that stuff. Not my style. Well, I live in the Midwest. We're much more uh, conservative, so I tend not to see it. And my practice is mainly professional patients, uh, people who don't want to uh, have obvious that they've had surgery. And I think we're seeing, we talked about in the last segment, that uh, the trend is going to less is more. You always tell my patients, so well, I want to make worthwhile you had surgery, but tasteful. These ridiculous things do not show up in St. Louis, and I'm very thankful for that. All right, well, let's move on to uh, our final story. This has got to be one we've got to let Del Vecchia lead off on. It's about scrotox. Um, Dan, what is the deal with this? Well, you know, I think this is all like spurned by, you know those toilets where you, the toilet seats like got an extra level up? That's actually not because people have problems with their hip flexion when they get old. It's so that their, their scrota don't fall into the water of the toilet. The problem, the problem with scrotox is it's not the stretching, uh, it's not the sagging of the scrotum, it's the actual stretching of it. So if you go into any of like the sex shops in Soho, London, you'll see these things called oh, scrotal stretchers. They're like tissue expanders that like literally stretch the scrotum out. So I, I think this is just another way to get the scrotum stretched out. Pat McGuire, you seen a lot of people coming in asking for scrotox? Uh, fortunately, I have not seen anybody come in asking for that, so I want to go no comment on this one. It's crazy. I can't understand the attraction. I don't get it. I've asked a bunch of women about it. Is, is that supposed to be sexy yeah. to have a, a big ball sack? I mean, what's the point here? I just don't get it. I've never had anyone ask me for it. I read about it, and there's a local derm here in Hollywood who wrote about it or was interviewed about it. I got to tell you. Never had anybody ask me for it. It's a smoother scrotum or a larger ball sack. I don't know. I just don't and get that, that point. And actually, you know, you, you, you're probably out of anybody is very qualified to comment because you're the innovator of Marina Manland, right? So you guys have a <laughs> plastic surgery pro hey. practice. That, and, and you're saying the guys aren't coming and asking for that, right? So, I mean. That's Marina Manland where a man can feel good about looking great. And no <laughs> one has ever come into Marina Manland and said, I want this smooth, big ball sack. All right, well, listen, uh, those are some awesome insights. I'm sure our viewers have enjoyed it, and you can see more of this on the PlasticSurgeryChannel.com.